Hi there, welcome to Chemistry 3007, Approximate Wave Functions at the University of Western Australia. In order to derive the Hartree-Fock equations, uh, which is part of your assignment, you will need to know about Lagrange's method of undetermined multiplies. What is it? Um, it's a method for optimizing a function or minimizing a function subject to constraints. You know about making minimizing functions if you have a function f of x. Normally to minimize it or make it stationary you would set its derivative equal to zero. However, what suppose you have a constraint such as uh, you want to minimize f of x squared plus y squared subject to a constraint that x plus y equals 3. You don't want to optimize the function with respect to all values, but only with respect to values such as x plus y equals 3. That's the constraint. So how do we do that? Because obviously when you optimize something, sometimes you have constraints. You know, you have a certain amount of money or you have to do this or that. Uh, constraints are expressed as equations. So such an equation might be expressed as g of x, y uh, is x plus y minus 4 equals 0. So that would be a constraint equation. By convention, we write these constraints involving the variables that we're interested in, in this case c, not x and y. We write them so that g equals 0. Okay, now, what does Lagrange's method say? What it says is if you want to minimize the function f subject to constraints, and there can be more than one of them, we need to construct a new function called the Lagrangian, and it's basically the original function, minus a sum over some Lagrange undetermined multipliers, these extra parameters called Lagrange undetermined multipliers, here called lambda i, times the constraint equation, such as x plus y minus 4. So lambda i all times the constraint, and we sum them all up with all these extra parameters, and we minimize this new function with respect to c, but also with respect to lambda as well. If we set the partial derivatives of this quantity equal to 0, we will get the answer that we're looking for. So it's an amazingly interesting method that allows you to solve constrained optimization problems. Now, how does it work? Um, it's, it's a little bit difficult to prove, um, but to understand why it works is not that hard. So for that, I'll refer to this picture, which I ripped off Wikipedia. And it shows a particular function, uh, f of x, y, uh, that we're trying to minimize. <clears throat> now f of x, y is a function in two variables, so we can represent it in a plane. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, we can represent it by contours or isosurfaces. So these dotted blue lines represent different iso values of the function f. <coughs> Excuse me. So um, for example, this function could represent height, in which case these would be contours of height. So this value might be a very high value, this value not so high, a lower elevation and a lower elevation, and the absolute minimum of this function would be at this point over here. So if we wanted to minimize this function, actually it's not really uh, saying whether this is minimizing or maximizing, um, the absolute minimum or the stationary point would occur at this point here. But at that point, the values x and y might not add up to 4, might not obey our constraint. Okay, so how do we get the constraint into this picture? Well, the constraint is shown over here, g, by the red line. The red line shows the constraint. So every point on this red line represents the constraint. Now, x plus y equals 4 is a straight line. Not all constraints are that simple. 
So this is a general kind of constraint, g of x equals c. And of course, we can plot the constraint too as contour levels. So g of x plus y equals c plus 1 might be another line parallel to this one. It would have its own contours. Now, the answer that we're looking for, minimizing f subject to the constraint that g of x, y equals c, lies on this red line. And in fact, um, if this was a maximum value, if we were trying to maximize the function f rather than minimize it, well, we would come down here, well, if, we're trying, if this was the minimum, we would come down here, and we would see that the answer was this point over here. This is the point which lies on the constraint, and it also is on the lowest contour level of f. So we can see graphically that this is the answer that we want. How do we characterize it? Well, it's really interesting. So the first thing you have to know is something about the gradient. So the gradient of the function, nabla f, by the way, nabla is also representing momentum in quantum mechanics, but don't get confused here. Nabla is just the derivative of f. In this case, um, it's a two-dimensional derivative. It has a df by dx and df by dy. And you have to know that the gradient of f is a vector. This is a vector. It has two components, df by dx and df by dy. And it always points in the direction of increasing f. So here are the gradient vectors uh, plotted in little blue lines over here. And you can see that they are pointing inwards. So actually, if these are the gradient vectors, this function is increasing. It's increasing, and this is a hill. And the maximum, the top of the hill is over here. It's not a minimum. It's actually the top of the hill. OK, that's great. Likewise, g also has a gradient. And it's pointing in directions where g increases. So here we have the red lines along g increasing along here. But look what happens at the solution point. At the solution point, the direction of the gradient g is exactly parallel to the gradient of f. So we can write that the gradient of f equals the gradient of g times uh, some scale factor. In this case, the scale factor looks like it's minus 1. They're pointing in opposite directions, maybe 1.2, because the red line is, is maybe 20% bigger than the than the blue line, the, the blue gradient line. And that's exactly what we have at this point. If we minimize L, we set gradient of L equal to 0, and that equals gradient of F minus lambda gradient of G equals 0. In other words, gradient of F equals lambda, some number, the Lagrange undetermined multiplier, times the gradient of G. So when we minimize L, we are basically looking for points where the gradient of F is parallel to the gradient of G. And we're looking for points like this. That is how it works. Notice at this point here, the red line, which is not the answer, points a bit downwards, and the blue line still points inwards. They're not parallel. They're not parallel here or here or here, but they are parallel at the solution point. There you go. I've explained to you Lagrange's method of undetermined multiplies. And you will need that to enforce the orbital orthogonality condition in the Hartree-Fock equations. See you later.